Welcome to Café Rollis, your Café Sorry, yeah, if you want. Should I, is it, okay. Um, so, I was, I was saying, should I have the Twitch chat open as well? If you, so I can see the questions. If you wish, otherwise, uh, usually it's not super busy, but... Uh, okay, I mean, I'll, I'll leave it then, that's fine. Okay. So that was us launch starting this episode in a super professional way. Uh, welcome to Café Rollist. Uh, today I'm joined by... Grant Owit. Grant, could you introduce Hello. nice mug? Uh, I got a boring Ooh. real estate agent mug today. Ugh, that's, that's not great. I mean, this is lying. There's tea in it. I can only have one cup of coffee a day, otherwise I get weird. Yeah, it's it, it's a builder's brew in my own. So uh, it's, Cafe Rollist is just the, the title. So could you introduce <laughs> yourself briefly for people who would not be familiar with you and your work? Hello, so yes, my name is Grant Howitt. I am a role-playing game designer. I live and work in London. Um, <laughs> games I have written include Goblin Quest, One Last Job, uh, Havoc Brigade, Unbound, Spire, more recently Heart, which is just, re just recently out, uh, Honey Heist, a lot of one-page games like Crash Pandas um, and The Witch is Dead. Um, and yeah, like lo lots of games. Honestly, slightly too many games. Yeah, in terms um, of in terms of number, I mean, you're, you're starting to get uh, quite a few uh, thick games. But uh, if you start to list all your one-page RPGs, that uh, that would take yeah. a while. We we just we just broke the forty mark. Wow, forty. Um, which is which is a lot, honestly. We uh we're, we're gonna we're gonna combine them all into a uh, compendium. Soon. Did you add a, my camera a first volume compendium? Is that going to be the second, or is it your your first? Oh, no, no. Um, so we haven't done a uh, like a, like a like a full printed compendium. We've done like bundles, which are all like individual bits of paper. Uh, and we have, I've just put together volume three of that, um, which is uh, which has uh, some really wonderful games in there, including it's a very short. So it's a very Northern Christmas starring Sean's Bean, where you play like a swarm of Sean Beans. It's really quite conceptual. Oh, nice. But uh, um, we're planning um, once we get to fifty, we're going to we're gonna we're gonna get them all like possibly redesign them all and get them all printed up in a, in a proper like a softback book for sale. Uh, but that's that's about a year out yet. So um, and al and also like a year from now, God knows what the world's gonna look like. <laughs> so, <laughs> it's quite hard to plan past about five days. Really. Yeah, we don't really know. Well, actually, that's a good segue. One of my favorite sentences, uh, that's a good segue, to uh, one of my ice-breaking questions. Uh, what is your routine like in this time of quarantine? Uh, has it changed in any way? Um, well, I don't go to a pub anymore. I don't see my friends. I used to have my friends over to game on Monday nights. They would come over and we would hang out and we'd have a nice time. We'd have some dinner, have a, have a glass of wine. That doesn't happen now. Um, I'm in three new games. Uh, all over Discord, uh, which is which is fine, I guess, but it's not it's not quite the same um, atmosphere as having friends over and sharing food and hanging out. It's very much like okay, we're here to do the game, do the game. But um, I, I'm 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 enjoying the games, um, but I don't go to the pub. I am terrified slightly of the outside, which is different from before. I mean, I feel even more agoraphobic. But like in terms of my workload, it's broadly identical. I'm, I, I, you know, I, I always work from home as a role-playing game designer. Um, I did, did did stuff via email and via Discord. So because because uh, Chris, my co-author, is in is in Sheffield, so you know, we don't have an office or anything. And it just yeah, it's it's been okay. There was a couple of um, let's say about ten days to two weeks at the start of it. I was completely fucking useless. Just absolutely, absolutely no hope. I couldn't write anything. Couldn't think straight. I was uh, like perpetually like scared and anxious, uh, but as as we've sort of gotten into understanding what this new period of life is going to look like and what and what this is going to what this entails, I feel that I've sort of gotten into a rhythm of things now. Where rather than say um, like going out once a week or going to the pub or seeing friends, there are other things we do which sort of lend punctuation. We're doing yoga, which is fine. It's 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 nice. I've got a very soft yoga, like like like. I think we're on day twelve, and and, and and two of the days so far, I've just been sit down under a blanket and think about sitting still. And I don't get behind that. That's all right. I miss yoga. Yeah. I, I I did a bit, uh, but yeah, I haven't for a while. Uh, I personally started working out with an app every morning. It's kind of mm -hmm. yeah my 
one of the things I do to 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 sort of to be busy. I mean, I'm very busy taking uh. care of my son, but uh, to do mm, something yeah. for me. I'm super glad I don't have kids. That's tough. Oh my, That's like, really like, tough. I've always been happy that I don't have children, but like I'm double glad now. And like, I mean, congrats to you, obviously, for you know spawning and bringing on the human race and stuff. I'm very happy oh, to man. be a father. To be oh, clear, man, it's but, great. Oh. Oh, it's just, I, I just, yeah, I have, you, 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 you're hearing some real horror stories, I think, now the infrastructure has, has sort of gone down, and, and like, you can't even go around to your neighbour's house and drop them off for 10 minutes or what have you, it's all, all, all day, so it seems, that must be quite stressful, so congratulations on getting him to go to sleep. Well, yeah, we didn't sleep that much tonight, <laughs> because uh, yeah. he woke up several times, but... Uh... Yeah, the it's it's weird. We we sort of lucky that I'm unemployed since the end of January. Uh, my oh, wa- yeah. my wife is working from home, and on one hand, I'm 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 looking for for a job. The good thing is the job center is much less uh, what's the word uh, clerical in their treatment <laughs> because really like, have they softened? Oh yeah, highly. Uh, when the oh, the good. lockout started, the, even just before they told us, yeah, you probably won't have to come ne- next week. Uh, because it, yeah, for people who haven't been employed in the in the UK, uh, first of all, like what people might think here, uh, it's really not high what you get uh, compared no, to other no, countries. Absolutely not. And second, the the procedure all around it is, uh, what's the word? Uh, yeah, draconian. Yeah, it's draconian and. It doesn't make any sense. Uh, it's mm. more like making a punishment of things, and you sign a lot of things which say Kafkaesque. Kaf- yeah, yeah, it's 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 really bad. Uh, I mean, mm. that's the that's the third time I apply with Job Center. Uh, the first time, mm. actually, I could not get anything from them, so I stopped doing it. I was at first doing it just to be in the system, but I haven't been in the UK long enough to to be entitled mm. to anything. The second time, mm. um, and the second time, I sort of freaked out. Uh, just the the level of intrusion I felt in my mm. in my life and it's it's not doesn't even help you develop a routine because it's made yeah. on purpose so that uh you cannot make plans you, the, mm. you you're supposed to be available at any time any day to to meet them so you cannot start saying okay each week i'm gonna do this on this day i mean mm. Anyway, so uh, my second ice-breaking question, you sort of answered it, maybe you got something else. Did you pick up any skills with software, tools, or anything, or hobby uh, during the quarantine? I've been, I've been gardening, actually. Oh, nice. I've been gardening. So, so we are, so we are lucky no enough kids to have... To have... and a garden. You, you are like the I know, right? It's great. Class. Yeah, it's brilliant. Yeah, oh, but yeah like, like we, are, we are massively privileged. Like, like thankfully, we had... We had uh, like a lump sum of money spare last year. I say spare. We'd saved up for ages, uh, and we moved things around. And we were able to get a down payment on a house on a on a flat uh, in East London, and thankfully it came with a garden. And so this uh, this year, um, I I finished writing Heart, and I was getting more and more stressed out and more and more weird. And I was like, well, I should go on a holiday because I haven't been on a holiday for two and a half years. I don't really know what they're like, and <laughs> I'm, not, I'm not very good. I'm not very good at taking them either. Like I just tend to like. So I was I was on a train. I was coming back from from, from Scotland. I was on a train. I was thinking, what do I want to do for a holiday? What do I? Where do I want to go? And all the places I was thinking was like, oh, I could go and write role playing games somewhere else, which is not a holiday. <laughs> <laughs> so instead of doing a holiday, I uh, we, uh, I took the money that we would have spent on that and, and, and spent it on gardening supplies and building supplies. And I'm, I'm, I'll, I'll see if I, so I've got the... I'm still going to show yeah. you I just put my camera out the window. Exclusive for Café Rollies to rent yeah, out its yeah, garden. Let's see. Yeah, there we go. So we've got some... Um, got some, some big... Some big currently empty planters out there uh, and a, bird, a birdhouse and stuff. That's cool. You That's could all. hide a few corpses in there. You could have if you could. That's the thing. They're not quite six foot down, so the foxes are probably going to get them. But um, yeah, you could have a few corpses. We were just we were just doing the maths on how much soil needs to go in, and apparently it's like six and a half thousand liters of soil, <laughs> which is ridiculous. Apparently, so I've got to try and work out how to get that delivered during a pandemic. But yeah, so I've been I've been gardening. We've been building things. Um, I've been focusing. Uh, I've, I've not really painted that many models. I like I like you know playing with toy soldiers. I've got. Um, Piece on my nice. desk, but um, 
not really done anything super super complex with that in the moment it's, i find it quite hard to like to focus and be creative and also i've been drinking a lot um i don't know like i think i think that's kind of a common thing but um like once it gets to about five six p.m i've got i gotta have a a drink and i guess there's otherwise there's no rhythm to the world which is strange but you know it's a, it's a it's a it's a solution rather than a problem I'm not a big drinker. Usually, I have a, maybe a beer sometimes. Not 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 with each dinner, but just some dinner. Like yeah. tonight, we should have steak and fries. So that's something I like to have a beer with. But at the moment, I cannot even have a beer because my son insists on drinking it. <laughs> so so it, really, yeah, it just becomes imp impossible. So uh, don't don't rat me out at the uh, social services. But we put a tiny bit of beer in water <laughs> and hand it to him. I mean, he's genetically he's Belgian, I guess, so it should be fine. But yeah, but yeah he, he won't let us. There's so many stuff he won't taste, and but that beer mm. and wine, he just wants it. And no kidding, we would hand him a uh, pint. Beer, it would beer is it. gross. Yeah, it's bad. <laughs> it's not. No, you have to really try to like beer. It's, it's been me ages. It's more, you know the. It's this weird construct. I guess it's the same with smoking. It's not that it's good. It's just mm. you associate it with other stuff. So you feel like, oh, yeah, yeah, I want to sure. reward myself right oh. now and feel like an, yeah, yeah, yeah. an adult with agent agency. So I'm going to drink a beer. <laughs> <laughs> Turns out yeah, you don't yeah, have any fair. agency because you got a two years old. <laughs> Congratulations. Absolutely, yeah. Now, I, I can drink all the beer I want, but no one's taking it off me. It's great. It's real. Uh... Now, admittedly, I will die alone, and that's and that, and that's kind of sad, you know. I'm not, I'm not going to have anyone to raise, or I don't get to sort of like make a smaller version of me and teach it things and protect it and have that sort of nurturing thing. There's very little joy, I suppose, around. That. I've got a cat, so there's that, but I, I I can't treat him like a son. So I think we've both got benefits and negatives, you know. Well, you got spiritual children. Uh, I was hoping one day to run into you to, to make a. Uh, a TikTok uh, about well yeah I'm not gonna explain TikTok but the problem with TikTok is jokes and memes and the moment you I try know what to TikTok is. you you know the moment you're trying to explain a joke it's not funny anymore so there's no point mm -hmm. but uh, I wanted to make a joke about the fact that you you and Chris uh, inspired mm. a lot of people at London RPG community some of them we we got in the chat room today to do mm. one one shot R uh, one uh, one page RPGs yes. as well so these yes, are your I played children. one of those. Which one? I, I, I played so um, I wasn't I wasn't warned I was going to play it, which, which was which is the best thing. I was just meeting uh, Ursa Dice off off off, uh, off Twitter. Uh, Matt, who writes, uh, he also writes one page games, and he was he was like, oh girl, I'm going to be in London today. Come hang out. Uh, a few of us are going to go. Uh, are going to be at drafts down near um, Waterloo. So like that. it becomes increasingly clear that we're going to play a game where we're all Beyonce. Oh, you played uh, that one. I played it recently. I, too. Mm, I played Enter the Beyonce-verse, which is just like surprisingly diceless. <laughs> it's, yes. it's, it's a, yeah, like like it, like you'd expect there to be dice in a game, but it's not, it was, uh, I, I played Beyonce gnomes uh, and I, I was a gnome. Um, and I think Dasha, the author has uh, has managed to she's very cleverly taken Beyonce completely out of the equation because no one can role play as Beyonce. I don't think, I don't think you could do a, a respectable or even good job what, of role playing be, as Beyonce. To be clear, you cannot play prime Beyonce. No, and she's not in the game. But, Beyonce Prime is not there. But you but one play of these Beyonce. subsidiary Beyonce. You still... One of these subsidiary Beyonces yeah. you have. That's fine. You, you, you've got a level removed from Beyonce. Which I feel is which I feel is very useful. So, what was your Beyonce like? I'm curious, and I, I'm very uh, excited to tell you about my Beyonce. I I, I was Beyonce gnome. I was a gnome. Uh, ah, gnome. Okay. Ah, cool. Yeah. And I I had, I had a lot of voice like this. <laughs> and, oh, I, 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 ro I rode around a larger Beyonce um, as a sort of steed, uh, and I believe we summoned a lot of bees. I don't, like I don't think that was strictly in the rule. I, I forget like whether or not you're allowed to summon bees, but we definitely did to resolve the plot. Um, it was it was one of the more ramshackle experiences I've had, and tremendous fun. I think that uh, Dasha did honestly something quite brave by making it diceless, and I'm rather impressed with what she pulled off. 
Yeah, that was quite hey, a you? feat. Her, her first ever game, and when she told me it's diceless, I was. You decided to design a one-page game, and you went for <laughs> diceless. Okay, wow. Yeah. I went for uh, Beyonce Survivor. She came mm -hmm. from a dimension where uh, Destiny's Child never split, but uh, okay. kind of all the tension uh, built up and sort of seeped through their their music and infected mm -hmm. the world, which went full on Mad Max. <laughs> and uh, my Beyonce was like full of muscle, uh, mm -hmm. kind of like a Klingon Beyonce, so like very muscular <laughs> and, and with a, a code of honor of surviving. And, and I was quoting oh, I like her song nice. con uh, constantly. So that mm, was cool. Yes, yes. Oh, that's the, the other thing, uh, uh, listener, viewer, uh, is you get points for, for working Beyonce songs into your, into your dialogue, uh, which, was, which was a challenge, seeing as I knew about three Beyonce songs. But I, 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 I think like like the player that like you have to write down all the number all the titles of Beyonce albums at the start, and that's how many BPs you get. It's uh, it's it's as much a role playing game as it is a test of your Beyonce trivia, which I was quite impressed with as well. Like again, just like it's really fascinating seeing stuff from new designers because established designers would never put that in a game. You never think, well, obviously, obviously, there's, there's going to be a trivia quiz at the start. So, yeah, why would you put that? Like, it's, it's brilliant. It's tremendous fun. It sets the tone for this ridiculous game you're about to play. But I think she it's, amended uh, the, yeah. the rules slightly because yeah, at first it was you you have to to name as many albums of Beyonce, mm. and and now it's just slightly different. You can name albums which are you can make them up, but they need to sound like an album. Someone yeah, I did would, that too. Mi mistake for for a Beyonce album. Mm. Good. Okay, that works. So you, you were mentioning I saw on Twitter that uh, uh, yeah it's it's a bit tough uh, finishing a project like Heart. You. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah. I can talk about it. Yeah, sure. It is. It's a bit tough. Um, so the way in which uh, we work as a business. So Chris and I basically spend about two, uh, three or four hours on the on the phone or on Discord to each other throughout the day, and the. Uh, We've been working on Heart for about 18 months to two years. We were working on Heart when we were doing Strata, which was the, uh, the source book for Spire. Uh, we were sort of getting an idea for what it was going to be then, and then it sort of slowly came together uh, as we were as, as uh, over the last 18 months. And it was only really by the time that we that like we hit playtest, uh, which would be uh, last summer. Yeah, last summer. Um, we we had it concrete. We had no, like we didn't have all the classes in place. We didn't have I didn't have everything ready. Everything was quite ramshackle. Um, and then I would spend about two to three hours a day sitting down writing, making heart come out, and like and like Chris and I would be in, would like would be in touch and be writing rules, or I like we'd do like we'd sketch out some ideas and I'd go away and turn them into prose and that sort of thing. Uh, and so it was just and then we had um, four source books. Uh, which were Kickstarter stretch goals, which came out as well, um, which were all between five and 10,000 words long. And so that's quite a lot of writing. It's quite a lot of words, but also just a place to put my brain. I had I had like my, my one page games every month to have something else to focus on a little bit and sort of like like to get sort of get my fr get my creative frustrations out, as it were. But that was what I did uh, for my for my for my job, basically. And when that's uh, when that's done, you end you enter this sort of this void, this weird thing, because your life's been about that. Your life's been about solving this problem. It's always dangerous to have um, a what's the word? Dangerous to to build so much of yourself around your creative pursuits. It's like it allow it gives you a great deal of strength, I think, and a great deal of focus in doing this sort of thing. But it also means that when something goes wrong, you can feel like personally wronged by it and like 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 things think things have gone tremendously badly um and so i it'd be about two weeks ago i like everything was put to bed everything was finished like we'd written all the additional content and i was just sort of like static in my brain like absolutely nothing i've also uh, i've quit um basically quit marijuana during the lockdown uh, wow. because it, it feels it, it feels foolish to um 
to, to rely. So yeah, it, I'm, I'm not going to report you to trail services, don't tell the police. Um, but it feels foolish to, re to, to rely on something which one, damages your lungs, and it's two, illegal to deliver during during a, um, a, 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 a global quarantine for respiratory disease. My so my neighbor downstairs. My neighbor downstairs doesn't Sorry? seem. To, my neighbor downstairs doesn't seem to have the same issue. He, I don't know. Either he's got a, a big, a big storage unit somewhere, or, or he's oh, still getting delivered. Man, I just think, I'm, I'm sure it's still possible, but um, it just it just it, I I felt that it was it was time to sort of clear my act a bit and move on. So I pretty much kicked it. Only have like I mean, very occasionally, it's a truth, but it's. Uh, it means that there's just great deals that these grand it's acres of sobriety without creative inspiration, without a thing to focus on. And it's quite quite a challenge sometimes to get up and get moving when you don't have anything anywhere to put your brain. It's uh, a, thankfully, go. It's it's a weird impression. I mean, uh, it's not to that scale, obviously, but finishing a project. I just finished a. I released the last part of an actual play I recorded with London RPG community. Uh, it's the work of six mm -hmm. months uh, with some dragon meat episode in mm -hmm. between. And towards the end, I was just so looking forward to be done with it. And, you know, the, mm -hmm. the, the yeah. evening I, I finally released it, I was like, yeah, tomorrow I'm going to enjoy myself. It's me time. Uh, and then the, <laughs> the nap comes of my son. It's the time I can do whatever I want except for the quarantine but still i could watch the mandalorian i could mm -hmm. do whatever and i'm just like mm -hmm. Ugh, i don't know yeah <laughs> yeah precisely it's, it's like you don't have anything to like i think having a, having an ongoing project as well gives you something to not do gives you something to rebel against something to ignore and yeah. so and so you can really enjoy yourself like i'm watching tv i should be right but i'm just gonna watch a bit of tv i should be right i'm, just gonna, I'm, gonna, I'm gonna make some biscuits and eat some biscuits i was like as opposed to you can do what you want, and like especially seeing as my partner's working from home you now full time, um, so they can see they can see how much work I'm doing. <laughs> and there's an element of uh, like, well, I have to like I feel marginally responsible to at least not not, not look busy, but to actually do things because I'm not trying to fool them. You know, I'm not trying to, I'm not trying to trick anyone. There's I, I think like there's an element of of, of being seen. Um, but it is it is weird having that having that, that that guidance that almost like you're like you lose a point on your compass you you like you become unmoored and unanchored and you like you lose something which you were defining the rest of your life by um so we have been we've been casting around a bit we've got um we've got a few things lined up like big projects which which we want to work on um nothing concrete yet um uh, we, 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 we're trying to sketch out like originally we we're planning to do um uh, three subsequent books for one for Heart, one for Spire, and one for both uh, for a as a Kickstarter over the summer. But uh, I don't know. We might like we're doing all right business wise. So we might just focus on on doing creative pursuits and like like longer term stuff while uh, while the world's in lockdown. Yeah, it must be a, a weird place also to be uh, as a as a publisher. I mean, it's a weird place to be for, as in many many industries. But yeah, we, I, I remember we had the episode about. Uh, doing a Kickstarter with uh, mm. uh, Mary, and a lot of stuff re revolved around the logistics of shipping stuff. Mm -hmm. So, mm. uh, how do you do that? So, if you launch a Kickstarter, do you do you go f more into the PDF rather than physical yeah. prints? It's it's weird. Like it's a thing. Like physical books are a are a nice thing to have, and I think that most like the the predominant way in which role playing books are used is to read them rather than play them. You know, I mean, we all buy more books than we play. You know, stands to reason. But the um, like the postal service, there's challenges certainly, and like some costs have gone up, um, especially getting into and out of America. Um, but the postal service has remained largely intact. Printers uh, have remained largely intact in pretty much every country. Um, like we've had, uh, we've had some, we've had not delays, but uh, like because like we're we're all we're, we're still within we're still within our time budget, we're still within our money budget for, for printing. Uh, but like there's there's definitely been an understanding of of like okay, you've got this print slot and you have to have it now. We can't mess around. Things are getting a bit tighter, a bit more confused. Um, but like it's, I, I, I think the, the the biggest worry is about um, like uh, recession and people losing their jobs. And in terms of like role playing games and books in general are a luxury industry. You know, we're not producing rice, we're not making blankets, 
uh, we're not doing gas like we're very much like we're at the top we're, we're at the upper levels of Maslow's hierarchy of needs and so we'll be some of the you know we'll, we'll be we'll be some of the industries which which are hit by this um but in terms of like in terms of how we're doing like a bunch of people have bought games a bunch of people have bought the patreon as well like people are i think really hungry for things to do and things to distract them and things to do with their friends online and now you can't go out and have a beer with them you can't go out you can't go to the theater you can't go and have you can't go have, have a meal you can't like, you can't even meet them in a park so you need something to do online and role-playing games are one of the best things for that yeah we're quite um, sort of lucky in a weird way because i never played a, as mm. many games and as many diverse games i mean i, I mm. found myself to play again with my very first RPG group from 12, 14 years ago. Yesterday I played with two podcasters who I've been listening to for for a long, long while. And yeah, that mm. was the opportunity to play for them, with them. Uh, mm. And yeah, I, I play many stuff actually. And it's, mm. it's, it's weird how, yeah, people are, are cutting their expenses, but at the same time, the role playing game is one of the best leisures to have at the moment compared to yeah it's, to, to sport it's and so good. on we got a yeah, couple it's, it's... oh go no no go ahead go ahead sorry no i was gonna say it's pretty good we got some questions yeah we got some questions uh we got two which okay. i think we can sort of merge so uh we got wintery mute asking uh, about designing heart did one of you focus more on mechanics while the other focused more on story world building etc I, I, thought, I, I thought you called us fuckers <laughs> sorry <laughs> why are you fuckers on mechanics <laughs> okay so that means on youtube we're gonna need to put uh, a <laughs> graphic language thing no you you focus you fuck right, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> on story or world building or was it more of a group effort and the neon caster is asking when you're building games collaboratively, oh. what are your tools and workflow? You fuckers. Oh. <laughs> you, you sons of bitches. <laughs> hello, Nathan. By the way, hello, Neon Custer. Um, so, Chris and I work in a way I've not really worked with anyone else. Um, I've done some collaborative stuff in general. Uh, and generally, like the way that it goes is that we will, like, you'll, you'll divide up parts of the book and go and write one part of it there and like and, and then you, and you, you sort of read over the bits other people have done and suggest changes it's very much i've got this bit of the book that's why we did paranoia um like we each had our own sections which we wrote and then looked over the other people's bits uh, but with chris and i um i have a degree in writing and i have written professionally for the last decade or so and chris um breathes role-playing games he like he is fascinated by mechanics. He is fascinated by the way things lock together. He purchases and reads and consumes a lot more role playing games than I do. So he is he is like primarily our mechanics guy. But um, the way the, the way that we'll work it out is that he and I will sit down and we'll try and work out what the core mechanic of a game is and when we can start building from that. So if there's any rules, Chris and I wrote them together. So like we were we were um, live over Discord. Only voice, never camera, we don't club each other. Um, and uh, in a shared Google document. And so I uh, will we'll, we'll get we'll get everything in the note form and then I'll, t I'll tart it up and we'll tidy it up later. In terms of fiction and stuff, Chris and I will go through and like we'll have we'll have some ideas together and some overall themes. So like so like uh, it, it might be like if, if we're writing things you might find in a in a Vermissian train tunnel, for example, um, we'll come up with ten ideas and there'll be like a handful of words in a sentence maybe. And then once we've got a rough idea, I'll go away. I'll, I'll, work, I'll write those up and then Chris will go back over it and say, cool, I like this. Oh, cool, this word isn't quite right. Oh, this doesn't quite work for me. Um, so I'm the, I'm the primary writer, but Chris has been involved in every decision that's been there. Um, and the reason why the, I keep Chris around, <laughs> that's, that's not quite. The, the reason why Chris and I work together so well is because I don't know. We produce we produce work that, that uh, the, the the work I do with Chris is different from my own stuff. It's very different. Even like and even though I might have like I might like all the words on the page might be mine, there's something in that creative process where the pair of us build it. And so like Heart and Spire are very different from well from say Honey Heist, because obviously it's one page and the other one's about overthrowing a government. 
but in terms of the tone, in terms of the things that I'm picking, um, Chris is uh, uh, just pushes things in a new direction sometimes, which I find really fascinating. It's really um, nice to have someone as... to to bounce things with. Uh... Absolutely, yeah, absolutely, and it's like we. I think the the biggest the biggest way that it works, the reason it works, is that we both have each other's best interests at heart. There's a lot of love there. Like we were, we we've been best mates for um, what year is it now? Twenty twenty. Uh, about fifteen years we've been best mates. Wow. Um. So um. So like ne nearly half of our lives, give or take, um. And we've uh like we because we, we met at university we started designing games together there uh and because there's as i said there's very little ego involved there's lots of my ego and there's little of his ego and from the and 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 so like i know that i know that if he that if, if he's like we can't put this bit in or i don't like the tone we've struck here or this rule doesn't work i know that what he's doing isn't a power play to try and get like to try and get his way and like i've worked in group projects where i'm like like why would you want to change that you don't understand what i've done here like like you've like you haven't tested this properly you haven't thought this through i know that chris has thought this through and it's like this will make the product better rather than oh i want to get my way and that and i, th I think it helps you know we, we own a business together we run the business um but that's it's a it's a really invaluable relationship and we produce really incredible work together um in terms of the tools we use we use google docs because it's free and because it's really simple, uh, like there's uh, there's very like it's very hard to do anything fancy with it, which means it's quite hard to break, which I quite like. Uh, we use Google Drive to store things uh, for, like, for backups and stuff. Uh, we use Discord. We have our own private Discord, uh, which we hang out on all day uh, with me, Chris, and Mary. And broadly, if you're online, it's, it's presumed that you'll be on the Discord available for chat. Um, and so we use that like a company Slack, I suppose, with the chat attached to it. Um, and so that's that's about that's about all the tools we use really as well. I also oh also these are really cool um, index cards. These ones are a bit floppy. I don't like these ones. Uh, they're a bit they're a bit loose. Uh, index um, cards. Yeah, yeah, index cards. Like they are they're great for thinking on. Um, they also uh, they also uh, if, if I was still smoking, they form excellent roaches. You can sort of roll it up, which is what I mainly use them for. But um, having one of the problems i've found um is like if you have a really nice notebook or something it's like oh i have to have only brilliant ideas in my very nice notebook whereas you can just you can just dick about and, and have some bad ideas and index cards and it's like they're they're temporary and they're they're they're, they're, they're transient and so that, that that really works for me uh, as yeah a, putting on post-its in a, in a notebook it's something uh uh, something mm. I played a bit with when designing adventures, and it was you're you're entirely right. When I it it blocks me writing in a notebook. Uh, I mm -hmm. always feel like you need to to pen things in a nice way, and I'm I'm terrible at taking note because my my writing just mm -hmm. sucks. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. So, I, I know what you mean. It's a it's a challenge. So does that mean uh, Mary is uh, Mary is uh, mainly involved in the the delivery side of things, or is she involved in the writing process uh, a bit? So Mary is um, Mary will generally look over stuff before we write it, and sometimes they'll edit it, but um, not not they're not they're not as involved in the creative side at the moment. We're really interested in bringing them more into the creative part of the business. Uh, at the present Mary is working on something called the uh, called the the, the pocket guide to the Vermissian. Uh -huh. So in Spire and in Heart, we have kind of a, uh, a, a haunted London Underground. It's the kind of cursed London Underground, uh, which runs throughout the whole city. And the interesting thing that Mary's doing with it is they're writing a, uh, a, a guidebook to it like from 150 years before Spire takes place, written in character, when it was all nice and new. And so like it's all it, it's all written assuming that this that, 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 that the that the 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 network works. See in a bit. Uh, assuming that the network works, um, and then there's gonna then there's an updated thing as well. So it's like, oh, actually, this is terrible. Now don't go here. It's full of needle tooth children or whatever. So that's really cool. It's all sort of in character. Um, Mary is primarily our. Um, uh, they work on strategy. They work on business. They work um, like getting the uh, like doing the accounts, all the difficult stuff that I don't quite understand, but we are like something which we're actually bringing in, seeing as like 
we're now in lockdown together and they're book the next door at the moment they're just blocking that wall. Um, we have the capacity to hand over a significant part of the day to day running of the business to me and Chris so we can be more in charge, we can make more decisions uh, and just sort of leave the fun, interesting bits about strategy and about uh, what our next product is and costing out things and like, oh, how are we gonna, how are we gonna earn the money for next year? And that's what Mary's really into. So hopefully we can just have them focus on that. Finn Cullen has a, a good advice in the channel. He says uh, the best tip he ever got for notebooks was to scribble like crazy on the first page. Uh, so this way it kind of gives you mind permission to use it for any <laughs> old thought rather than only pressing important. Uh, and actually, uh, my son grabbed one of my notebooks this week. So maybe I can uh, ah. ask him to do that in, in all my notebooks. Uh, I quite like that. It's a bit like the uh, like 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 the like the, the Buddhist idea of, of, of like uh, the, or I think it's also like an Islamic idea that perfection is impossible and we shouldn't strive for it. But and so like. It, 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 Yeah, so, sorry. Uh, no, it's just it reminded me. Uh, I run workshops for my work, and we did those big A trees, a flip book. And the idea is that we would mm. we would have three of them. We split in three groups, and those were brainstorming sessions with engineers, uh, people from transport unions, and things. And they, they were supposed to write ideas on in them. And actually, that's what we did. We put on because we invested work in doing those A tree look nice and good and colorful. Uh, the first thing we did when we laid them on table is take a big marker and scribble on top of it, like destroying it, saying, mm. you see, that's what you're supposed to do. Because if you, we would just leave the the marker with the thing pristine, mm. uh, nobody was willing to be the first to, to ruin no, no, no. it. You need to, need to break that seal, as it were, yeah. No, that works. I think I, I, really, I really like the idea of scribbling on a book or like um, having it... There's the there's the idea that that you get these guys. I think it's like um, so as, as I was saying, it's an Islamic thing that like the one they when they'd weave a they'd, they'd weave a carpet, they'd put in deliberate um, imperfections because, because because perfect creation was the work of God, and, and and to attempt that would be sacrilegious. And like I'm not a religious man, but I can definitely see the idea of like okay, let's not strive for perfection, let's strive for good. And that's that's, a, that's I think much closer to my ideology. I've got a question through Twitter actually. Oh, go ahead. Yeah. Faint Dreams writes in, question, what is the most annoying mistake that you keep seeing people new to TTRPG games designing make? Mm. Mm. Are you well, good at that, pointing out mistakes in TTRPG design? <laughs> that's, that's what Chris is for, primarily. Chris is mainly there to catch all of my mistakes. They come out of me like a fire hose, and Chris just stops them from, ever, from, ever, from the public ever seeing them. I don't know. I think that um, in terms of, I, I don't think I don't think that like, I get annoyed by mistakes, but I think that I, I, I'm perhaps disappointed or like um, saddened because uh, I, I, I think that the biggest mistake that I'll, that I'll see people do is you probably see about one thread, maybe two threads a week like this on RPG or RPG design on uh, on Reddit. So it'll be like, my game's been in playtesting for 15 years, and I'm just ready to. To show the world, my girl, like, what the hell is wrong with it? It took you 15 years to get it ready. Like, your game is going to be so weird. It's going to be such a strange mutant thing, completely devoid of, of. Um, it's, it's it's a bit like it's a bit like like trying to raise a child in a cave and never showing it another child. It's going to grow up really strange, and. If you're spending 15 years before this thing sees the light of day, it's like you've put too much in. There's too much development. There's too much time. The biggest, the biggest mistake which people make, I think, is not releasing their games. Uh, and like 20 years ago, we didn't have the capacity to release games. Um, like you, uh, like so, so, uh, so, so 20 years ago, 2000, the internet was available. But not it was nowhere near as prevalent as it was today. So if you wanted to release a role-playing game, you basically had to get it published or pay for the print run yourself and then drive to cons and sell the book physically. It was a real challenge. But now you can stick a game up on Twitter and 2,000 people can see it in an hour. It's like the capacity to release your games. Uh, Itch.io is an incredible platform for new designers as well. And then it gives you this really clean way of selling your games and you can choose how much money you want to give to the platform um there's a lot there's, there's, there's a fascinating community of new artists on there it's fascinating and like, like there's a whole movement in it you know, of, of like making these strange small games and um i think that a lot of people are making these massive products 
um, and then they get too attached to them and they can't deal with undermining it, they can't deal with changing it. And I think that, that, that getting something out as soon as possible, especially as a new designer, is crucial because then people well, well, people will know who you are, people will know what your work is, people like you can get quite aside from critical feedback, quite, quite aside from like play testing, you just exist. That's done and you can move on to the next thing rather than trying to make something perfect. I think that's that, that's that's the that's the most frustrating mistake that I see is that people spend far too long developing something and quite often just never release it. And there's so many brilliant books, so many brilliant games which just don't aren't they don't exist uh, because because they're only on someone's hard drive. So when you say playtesting, in your case, in what you were describing, is someone playtesting something for 15 years or or, or waiting 15 years to playtest it? Um, sorry, waiting, waiting 15 years for public playtests. Oh, so public like, ones. Quite often, mm -hmm, like quite often, they'll be playing with their friends or whatever. And it's an exaggeration. Almost like seven years. Or like, oh, I've been playing this for five years, or whatever. But I've seen 15, 17 years. <laughs> um, and that is that's that's crazy. I can't think of anything I've done for 17 years. I do not. Like, off, off, I, I cannot like the time scales involved and just the. Uh, yeah, I think that it's important to, to to expose yourself to failure, to expose yourself to new ideas, to create something and finish it and move on. And like you can come back to it and do a second edition, you can iterate, you can build spin-off games, you can do that. But having the capacity to say, right, this is done, go play this, don't play it, whatever, that gives you a creative freedom to move on rather than feeling tied to something like rather than trying to write you know the next world of darkness rather than trying to write the next dungeons and dragons right off the gate because no one's going to write the next dungeons and dragons that isn't going to happen um yeah test and trial matter. you you know it's uh, that's what mary was saying also about kickstarter if you i mean of course you'd, you should put things in place for your your campaign to be successful but if it's not it's not a a total failure, a total waste of time because you still develop experience, the contacts, and uh, and you can move forward and you can make a second edition or a second campaign uh, if you want. I mean, uh, I had someone rather aggressively. <laughs> I, I posted about Chaosium uh, is going to publish a French game called Worm, which is set in the okay. pre prehistoric pre uh, prehistory. And uh, yeah, the gentleman that gentleman was one of the first I ever blocked from uh, my page on Facebook came very aggressively saying that uh, it was a, a shit idea to play a prehistorical adventure since GURPS uh, in 1986, which made a supplement about that and pointed out that the, the worm Kickstarter had been a failure in the US. And yeah, but the author improved their game and, and now Chaosium is going to publish it, so... Yeah. Yeah. It... But, uh, I think that there's, a lot of there's a lot of negativity as well. Like, people are people are scared of new things, people are scared of things they don't quite understand. People um, can be quite... I, I, I'm, I'm not mean to that myself. Like, if there's things which I don't understand or I don't enjoy, I can be like, oh, this is rubbish. Oh, I don't like this. Um, but I tend to keep it to myself, generally. I, I've had a couple of Twitter threads of, like, where people, um, while I maybe, I maybe said some things which were disagreed with um, in, uh, in in public, and I'm, I'm, I'm kind of I'm kind of learning how to talk in public and how to dislike things uh, in a way which is non harmful. We got say. we got Dave, uh, aka autocratic, who feels very exposed by uh, your comment of developing something for very long. I assume that that's what he meant when he, when he says he feels seen. And we've got Neon Caster. Who, who, oh, who, he did. He did. Um, he's, he's got the tarot game, right? Oscaratic, I think. Uh, well, he worked on Doctor Who and. Uh, yeah, 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 yeah. Yes. Quite a few things. Uh, and he does the the yearly yes. uh, RPG. What's it called? Um, uh, when you answer a question about RPG each day, uh, we got that each year. Looking forward for the 2020 mm -hmm. edition. Uh, yeah, and we got Neon Castle mm. saying he recently saw someone release a Pokemon D20 heartbreaker after 10 years of writing it. So this is hella real. Yeah, yeah. Um, heartbreakers are the other thing. Um, you know, the, 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 the idea that you can fix a role-playing game which you which which you which you enjoyed and now you've grown up and you want to try and have that same experience. And a lot of that is like, well, you're not 15 again. Like you're, you're not like you've moved on as a person. The person who, the person who played 
Dungeons and Dragons to the second ed is dead now. Like they 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 have changed and you are a different person and you can't like you can't you can you can try to recapture that. So I'm trying to find fascinating with Dungeon World especially. Yeah. Dungeon World is a dungeon it's a Dungeons and Dragons simulator. Yes, yes, that's 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 a... a genre simulator of the tropes of Dungeons and Dragons. I'd really like to play. Yeah, that. yeah, it's I, I said that it's it, it didn't it didn't quite gel with me. I, I didn't for some reason. I think I just rather I'd rather play D and D. Um, but I think that like it uses rules to create the experience of a good D and D game, which is like and like and like in a good D and D game, you cut out about I'm gonna say forty percent of the rules, if not more. You just ignore them. You just gloss over them, or you make up your own bits, and and and, and so it's it's got the it's got it basically it's programmed a good GM into the system. Um, but yeah, heartbreak is the other issue. In as much as people are going to try and rewrite Dungeons and Dragons, I mean, shit, we did. You know, hearts, hearts D and D, basically, and that we've got you know we've got rangers, we've got clerics, we've got wizards, we've got fighters, but we've, we're, we're trying to, I suppose, take those ideas and build on them and talk like examine the idea of like what is dungeon crawling and why on earth is it a good idea like what who are the sort of people who are dungeon crawling it's it's a question of taste but what i find fascinating with quotation mark smaller games or maybe more contemporary mm. game is rather than trying to do everything they focus on an aspect of the game so right now yeah, i'm yeah, developing yeah. a game so again you've got the cleric you've got the fighter you've got the rogue all of that but rather than than be like uh, Dungeon World, which is kind of a, the tropes of Dungeons and Dragons uh, in the whole adventure, what I've been trying to mm. do is it's something I, I didn't have that often when I was playing Dungeons and Dragons. Is the end of the campaign? Be often, I, I often I never reach the end of a, a proper campaign. Yeah. Sometimes even adventures. Most campaigns don't end. So, so I'm creating a game which starts once you defeated the big bad evil person nice. and and you share the loot and you're gonna find out what's gonna be the epilogue for for your character mm. uh but it's it's funny to see games which focus on an aspect rather than another and you're not trying to do it all at once uh but rather okay what do i want my game to be mm. really about what's gonna be the focus of that uh, rather than uh, uh the reach of a spear or maybe it could be you could make a game about the reach of spears but just that that would be inter interesting what yeah, that's, that's, the, that's the thing. Like, like you could make an interesting game about. Oh, actually, so on on one hand, let's say I'm, I'm going to talk about reach and combat and positioning, and also like maybe about have, about how far we're keeping away our people, our friends from us emotionally. There's some stuff you can play with there. Yeah, that's kind of interesting. But I think that one thing that games have the capacity to do is focus in that really tight, abstract way. Like the example I always give with Dogs in the Vineyard, which is unfortunately no longer available. It's um, you, know, you can get a you can get a, a cut down version of it. Really? I believe. Wow. Um, yeah, uh, uh, Baker took it down because he wasn't happy about some other design decisions and also like the way that you play. Like it's 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 very twisted in a lot of it, in a lot of decisions and like it doesn't it doesn't paint Christianity in like a non problematic light. It's talking about the issues of, of you know of, of worshiping a god and having people who are ordained by God to 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 um, to enforce the law. But um, yeah, it's no longer it's no longer available for sale. Unfortunately, you can probably steal a PDF. But the um, what it does is it tells this one story really really well and nothing else like you cannot you cannot in dogs in the vineyard roll to see if you climb a cliff that doesn't that isn't the sort of story it's telling but you can roll to see if um if when you go and confront your cousin uh because he's been cheating on his wife uh which one of you dies and like that's it does these really powerful thematic beautiful moments it's exhausting going to play well but I think that's that's the that's where you can that's where you can you have a hope in hell of, of edging out. You can't edge out D and D. You're never going to edge out D and D because you don't have the marketing budget that Wizards has. Wizards spend so much money on pushing D and D and making sure that it is the role playing game. Um, like Critical Role have been beneficial, obviously, but Wizards have spent a lot of money on them making sure it all happens. You know, so it's it's a it's a it's it's an ongoing challenge like to to, to 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 try and try and make your own way but i think by having something which which you're just telling one story really well and then you can you know you play it once and then move on they've still bought the game you know you've like they've still had that fun experience you've still made the money and everyone's come up slightly rather than trying to write a game of rules for stairs dnd is a weird animal and the dnd the community i mean that's that's one of the several ongoing topics which keeps coming back on on my show because of mm. me 
is I mean I just finished editing this actual play of Dungeons and Dragons uh, run by Andy from London RPG community amazing dungeon master really but like uh, what I see more and more people and it, I mean people are having their fun it, it, of course it's coming across as a judgment but I find it fascinating that people are so attached to D&D and in the case of London RPG community there are, you have literal queues virtual queues mm-hmm. of six people in a waiting list to join yeah. a game of D&D each week in London yeah. RPG community meanwhile you got other games which are offered and I'm not just talking about the games I'm offering and maybe I'm, I'm not uh, interesting people as a game master that might be the thing but I see other games no, people, people yeah. are just not that interested and I would get it if people were if, dare I say actually playing Dungeons and Dragons because this actual play and what I see we are having fun in spite of Dungeons and Dragons Dungeons and Dragons do not mm. do not support at all the story we're telling uh, it's small. That, that's why. That's why it's popular. I think that's that's why it's popular because it gives you. It gives you like we were talking earlier in the stream about having um, a set of rules. Sorry, a um, a project which you can ignore. Yeah. So like, so you can go and watch TV or have a beer, or whatever. D and D is this big stir. It's three books, three proper hardback books, each so like each twice the length of a normal role playing game. Each more length of a role playing game. Which, which are like, hey, here are all the rules. And you're like, whatever, mate. I'm going I'm to go kiss some orcs. And you get to rebel against that and have fun with it. And it has, like, you just use the very loose structure of a game. But yeah, you're right. If When you have, when you have fun playing D&D, it's in spite of D&D. Yeah, it's weird. It's weird. I mean, I edited bits when we, we would make skill checks and it dragged the game to a halt mm-hmm. completely. It, it was not even giving us prompts. And I mean, I, I love, uh, yeah, I, I run D&D, uh, not 5e, I run 4e. And it's funny how, oh, you, you ask a skill check. I ask a skill check, not so much because I'm interested by the result, but oh, hang on, I need to, I cannot say, give me a minute so I think out uh, about this. Say, um, pick a skill and, and roll for it. Mm. Okay, so I'm like, oh, oh, okay, this is gonna happen. What, what, mm. what did you roll? Uh, that was a success. Okay, uh, mm. this happens. Uh, the wolf, fr- the wolf fall down, and uh, the the orc is yeah. smashed under it. And like DCs are largely imaginary. It's just kind of whatever the GM feels like. Yeah. Right? It's like so. so I, I I much I really I quite like games where it's like, hey, if you roll this number, you succeeded. Like if you roll four or higher, you succeeded on the action. And the the conversation difficulty is between the GM and saying, okay. This is how much, like, this is how big a target. Here's what you can achieve on a four plus, rather than roll a d20. And if if I'm in a good mood, you do the thing. And if I'm if, if I'm in a bad mood, you don't do the thing. Unless you roll, I don't know, like seventeen up. You can't really argue your way out of seventeen up, you know. Yeah, it's funny. I'm I'm in a weird place. Uh, I've been listening to too many podcasts, uh, not so much actual plays, but advice podcasts, and. Mm-hmm. I don't even know anymore what I really like to play. I'm looking for the system it's which weird. will match what I'm, I'm after. Uh, it's there's no there's no there's no one system. There's no like it's no, not of like course. it's it's it, there's there's different groups at different times in our lives. There's different stories we want to tell, and I think that um, like I really like I think Monster Hearts is a great game. I love Monster Hearts, and there are maybe of the, all the people I know, there's about six people I'd play it with. Because it's a, it's a, it's this intense, intimate thing, and I think one, again one of the reasons for D and D is like you can play with anyone. Anyone knows what's going on. Like like anyone can grasp that. Everyone's aware of the tropes because there's no setting in D and D. It's just every fantasy thing you can think of is jammed in there like a bucket. That's why it's uh, anyway. <clears throat> I'm not sure what I like either in terms of role playing games. I think there's lots of interesting things. I think there's lots of like. I think rather than trying to find the thing I like, it's trying to enjoy the thing I'm playing. Is what I, is, is, is is what I'm getting towards. Or like, or like, oh, what what does this offer me? What's this interesting? What stories is this telling? And then moving on or sticking with it or what have you. But um, yeah, I'm not quite sure that I've been having a lot of fun with Electric Bastion Land. Bastion Land, which is uh, yeah, 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 it's um, Chris McDowell's new game, which uh, is, which is which is shipping now actually. So if you've ordered a copy, you should have it. 
I believe the PDF is for sale. Uh, it has it has basically a hundred classes, uh, but, <laughs> but, but 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 the but like they're they're all failed careers. So it's all it's it's all, it's what you used to do before you were a veteran, and then you failed, and so now you're ten thousand pounds in debt, and you have these remnants of your old job. But it's a really character, really lovely idea from the sort of like not quite steampunk, but getting there city. Uh, it's a really gorgeous girl. I recommend people take a look. Uh, anyway, listen, I have to shoot off fairly soon. I yep. believe you have to wake up your son. Yeah, you are. You're right. Thank you very much. Do you have anything uh, you wish to plug, and where can people find you if you wish yeah, to be sure. found? Yeah, um, sure. Go to um, if you go to Twitter. Uh, I'm GS Howitt, G S H O W I T T on there, and I I talk about everything I release through there. At the moment, if you go there, my top pin tweet is you can get a PDF of Heart, which is our new uh, body horror dungeon crawler. Um, just tr telling tremendous tales of pathetic loss and desperation in a cursed city under Spire, which I think you'll like. Yeah, that sounds awesome. Uh, thank you very much uh, for joining us. Uh, we had a lot of people in the chat room. That was great with oh, a lot of feedback. Uh, this was Café Rollist, uh, which uh, outside of quarantine is supposed to be our bonus show to the people supporting the show via Patreon. You can find 80 or so... Uh, additional episode of Cafe Rollist uh, on the Patreon if you decide to support us there uh, with as little as $1 per month. Uh, please consider also joining our newsletter if you want to, to hear what we are up to. Uh, and yeah, check our, check our panel. So we recorded with Sean Hunt, uh, Dr. Leonardi, and Andy Peregrine about London as a tabletop RPG setting. And go check uh, our series, Actual Play Dungeons and Dragons with London RPG community. Thank you very much, everyone. So long.